Good to see you again. Ah, we are returning to the world of Pokemon Yellow. Very excited to do so. I think last stream was Sunday, if I'm not mistaken. Saturday or Sunday. So I'm excited to get back into it. Um, hopefully get over the hump for this week. Last time we were here, we defeated Giovanni at the Team Rocket Hideout, our resident mob boss. Uh, we added a new member to the squad. We have Eve here, the Jolteon. It knows Thunderbolt, which is very, very powerful for this point in the game. Uh, we've got my famous wife, the Weeping Bell, at level 25. We've got Birdie, the Pidgeotto, at level 25. We've got Keith, Angel, the Gyarados, um, at level 25. We've got Hanky Panky the Mankey. Hanky Panky the Mankey. <laughs> at level 25. And Biddlebug, our little cutting mole guy. Diglett. Perfect. Um, all right, so... Now that we have the Sylph Scope, I did a little, uh, a few things off screen. I just uh, healed the squad, put some items in the, uh, what you call it, the box. And now we're going to head back over toward Lavender Town. Because. Let's get on that bike. We need to go to the Pokemon Tower to continue our story here. Um, there are going to be a few more Pokemon that I want to add to the squad. Um, again, I'm going to cut through here just so we can... That's not what I wanted to do. Just so we can avoid some trainers. How's everybody's week going? Um, our week has been pretty good. I had Monday off um, from my job at the school where I work. And yesterday I just had a training. So this was my first day really back on the job since Thursday. It's almost been a week, which was absolutely lovely. Um, so I'm feeling pretty refreshed. I only have two more days left to go for the week, which makes me over the moon excited um one thing i just wanted to talk about with this game and just all of these games and video games in general is the music the music is so good and helps to create such a great world and even on the limited hardware that these games had to work with they created such great memorable tracks um like in here it's like such a great evolution of the town's theme um and i think video game music i know a lot of gaming people really love video game music but i think the general public doesn't really fully appreciate it um, or see it as like a true art. They have some of the greatest composers in the world compose music for video games. So, um, and one series I really would love to get into at some point is Kingdom Hearts. And there are, the music in those games is impossibly good. It's so so, so good. Okay, I am going to use a repel at some point here, but I want to show you our new what our new Sylph Scope does. See, before it just kind of showed like a vague ghost. Now it actually shows the ghost-type Pokemon, and we see here Ghastly. As I've explained before, there really is only one um, ghost-type line in the game. And it is the ghastly line. Um, hold on, let me switch some things around here. I want to have Keith Angel on the front because we need a special attacker. Um, because normal moves will not work against the trainers that use ghost-type Pokemon. And a lot of the moves that you have at this point in the game are 
ghost type moves, or normal type moves, rather. Which again, that's why um, ghost type is kind of considered a boss type. I do not like Lick because it has a chance to paralyze, which it did. Um, and then it makes you slower, of course. But yeah, back to the discussion of video game music. Some of my favorite music ever made is from video games. Like, there are video game tracks that I like more than, you know, traditional music. Or like, you know any, like, pop or rock or metal track. I'm gonna heal this paralysis. Um, because I had that one sitting in my bag. Do I have a full heal? I don't think I do. Um, see, that was a paralysis heal, and that is an item that specifically heals paralysis. But, and there's, like, an awakening that heals sleep, there's antidote that heals poison, um, and... There are items called full heals that f heal anything <laughs> fully, if you will. Oh, critical hit. See, Nightshade will do exactly 24 hit points. Um, it's similar to Dragon Rage in that it will only do a set amount of hit points. But, like talking about Kingdom Hearts, some of the tracks... Um, from those games. I mean, specifically, just the opening track of the title screen of those games is deeply, deeply iconic. Um, okay, this is the third floor. Once we get up to the fifth floor, there's something we're going to be looking for. And literally, just the title screen music. Like, I would want that song played at my funeral. It's so beautiful. Um, and that is just something that I wish, uh, more people could appreciate. I know we're kind of living in a time now where video games are just becoming more a part of the culture. Um, and is, you know, one of the reasons I, at this point in my life, feel, uh, comfortable enough to do something like this. Earlier in my life, I probably wouldn't have had the confidence or, you know, sense of self to do it. And I'm really happy that I do now. Uh, I'm going to try Wife here. But I still think more people could appreciate video game music. Um, and video games in general. Which is why I am so excited to share them with you. So, oh, Lord Almighty. Um, see, that's not going to do a lot. It's not very effective. Um, I'm going to go back out to Keith Angel. Confuse Ray. Confuse Ray confuses you. If you didn't know. Um, I'm going to use Dragon Rage. And again, this is a dragon type move, but it, since it does a, like a specific amount of damage, it doesn't really, uh, you know, take that into account. The fact that it's a dragon move. Okay, I hate this so much, so I'm going to switch back to wife, because I think one more vine whip should do the trick. And yeah, again, really happy that I'm kind of in the point of my life where I feel comfortable doing this. Also, really happy that we are in the point of human history where this is, like, possible to do. Because, um, you know, when I was growing up and I loved this game and others like it, I couldn't do this. No one could. Um... This is not a thing that was happening <laughs> in 99. Um, so, yeah, one thing we're going to run into, as you can see, if you look at Birdie here, 
Gust is a normal type move, and Quick Attack is a normal type move, and there are only attacking moves. So, at the moment, we can really only use Eve and Keith Angel um, against these Ghost-type Pokemon that we're going to encounter. And I'm going to skip some of these Chandlers, but I want to fight a lot of them. Yes, and this is Pokemon Tower. It's like a Pokemon Graveyard, and it is pretty much inhabited by Ghost Pokemon and these uh, channelers that use ghost-type Pokemon. And this is a really iconic um, location in the franchise. This is a, specifically a really iconic location in the Generation 1 games. Um, and we're actually, we're gonna get up to a really neat um, little mini boss that I'm excited to show you. Because I believe, ah, that little square there, that dotted square, that is a healing zone, which I'm very happy to see. Because that means we're not going back and forth to the Pokemon Center all, all day long. I really wish that did the whole thing. And yes, especially because um, Ghastly and its evolved form Haunter really love to use Lick and Paralyze you. Oh. Entered Purified Protected Zone. Ash's Pokemon are fully healed. Oh. Ah, we're getting to the point where my repels are being... Oh, that's very rare to happen, actually. Where you will run into a Pokemon and it's the same tile that you're supposed to fight a battle. Um, but we have a repel up, which is supposed to repel away the wild Pokemon. However, since that Ghastly was at level 27... It is, it like overrides the repel. If it is a higher level than you, it will, you know, like I said, override the repel. And we can use my wife in these ghastly battles, but again, it's gonna be really generally ineffective. Oh my gosh, I did nothing. Okay, I'm switching back. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, at this point, Jolteon and Gyarados are going to be carrying the squad. I'm excited to continue to upgrade as we go. And I'm excited that the Ashes Reject Pokemon run is really going to become a true Ashes Reject Pokemon run. Because we're not going to use them. <laughs> well, because... Once we, I, I had such a grand plan for this, but then once we got started, I was like, I want to show some of the other things that the game has to offer. Okay, I'm gonna save here. Ba -da 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 -da. All right, so, uh, I don't know if I really wanted to do that. Okay, I do want to grab that item down there. Um, one thing that I believe I've talked about on another stream is Cubone, the Pokemon Cubone. And we've run into it before, and its whole thing is that it wears the skull of its dead mother, um, which is pretty metal, and I appreciate that about Cubone. But it's also very sad. And in Pokemon Tower, there are pretty much only ghost types. However, you can find Cubone. And that is a Pokemon that I would love to add to the squad. Because I think it has a really uh, deep place in Generation 1's lore. And I think that's really cool. And, okay, still ghastly. We will go out to Keith. And that legend of Cubone's dead mother is furthered here 
because once we get to the end of this room, there is a wayward spirit that we need to identify. And we learn that this wayward spirit is actually the ghost of Cubone's mother. In other words, what Cubone evolves into. And it is a really cool story moment um, that we will um, take in together here. So my repel should be pretty close to wearing off. When it does, I'm going to try to find a Cubone. Okay, good. I was hoping she would only have one. And in later generations, they kind of like tie the idea of Cubone's mother in with um, Team Rocket and stuff like that. That's really cool. I just really enjoy it. And I thought that Cubone would be a great Pokemon to show off to you all. Cubone even got a feature in Detective Pikachu. I don't know if anyone's ever seen that movie. Um, it was one of those movies where I really enjoyed it. I had wanted, you know, a live-action Pokemon movie for my whole diggity-darn life. But I just never thought we would get one. So I was really excited that it existed. Um, and I didn't really care that much how good or bad it was. Um, but it was pretty good. I thought it was cute. I thought it was really funny. Um... There was some really good, um, really good ideas happening in there. Especially with, spoiler alert for Detective Pikachu, if you haven't seen it or care. Um, but there is a moment where there is a ditto. And in the original anime there was a Ditto that couldn't get the eyes right. Ditto's whole thing, backtrack. Ditto is a Pokemon, and the only thing it can do is transform into other Pokemon. So, in the anime, there was a... Um... Don't do it. Okay, good. There was a Ditto that could transform into other Pokemon, but it couldn't get the eyes right. And Ditto has these really weird little beady eyes. So it would look just like the Pokemon, but still have the weird little beady eyes. And in Detective Pikachu, there is like a henchman that is always wearing sunglasses. And you're just like, ooh, who's this mysterious henchman? And then as you go along, you learn that it was actually a um, Ditto the whole time, which I thought was a really cool idea. Um... And they have an interrogation scene with a Mr. Mime, um, which is a mime Pokemon that can make, like, invisible walls. And it's just, they have a really funny, like, interrogation bit with this mime that can't talk. It's really funny. Um, there were really cool, cute ideas in there. Um, so right there, that staircase. Oh, okay. Um, I have Birdie out here because I would love to see Birdie... Sorry, I apologize for the speed up, but I'm really trying to find our friend Cubone. Um, let's see. Um, that staircase down there that you see, that is where we will find our wayward ghost. And that was really the main reason, ooh, a haunter. That is one of the great sprites. Oh, that sprite is so good. Um, Ghastly evolves into Haunter, by the way, for the uninitiated. Um, that staircase is where we'll find our wayward ghost. And that is the real reason we needed to get the Silscope before we could come back here. Because I believe when we came here the first time, it just said, oh, there is a ghost that you can't see. And... You can run away from them. You can't fight them, but you can run away from them. Ah, there you are. Um, you can't fight them, but you can run away from them. So, in theory, you could get up to this point, but the game will not let you progress further. 
against the Wayward Spirit, because the Wayward Spirit you actually have to battle. Um, right, we're going to try to keep things safe, because we don't want to knock out our friend Cubone here. Yes, I think one more quick attack will do it. Even with a critical hit, we should be fine. Okay. Yes, Bone Club, Rock-type move, won't affect our Flying-type Pidgeotto. Uh, these are regular, regular old Pokeball. Let's see if this works. Mmm! Awesome. So Cubone, we will pick back up um, when we leave Pokemon Tower. Where's the skull of his deceased mother? Its cries echo inside the skull and come out as a sad melody. <laughs> That's so sad. Um, I do want to give a nickname to Cubone. <laughs> uh, I'm gonna do this. Just bony. Bony! I don't know if any of you have seen I Think You Should Leave, um, the Netflix show. It makes me think of the sketch where he's like, FRIGGIN' BONIES! Um, so yeah, Cubone's a bony, man. So, now, we're gonna go into my wife, because we... And we're gonna use a repel as well. Uh, not a potion. Where are my repels? They're down here. We'll save, because I caught my Cubone. Be gone, intruders. Yes, this is the ghost that we really needed to identify to be able to progress in the game. Silph Scope unveiled ghost identity. It is the ghost of Cubone's mother. Cubone's mother Marowak. And I love this fight. It's just a really cool little checkpoint. And it's not, like, particularly difficult. It's just one level 30 Marowak. I mean, this will probably hurt a little bit. Um, but it just means a lot. It's just a cool, like, little meaningful encounter. And something that I that just really um, adds to the lore of the games and the region that I think is really cool. And that's why I wanted to use Marowak for this run. The ghost was the restless soul of Cuban's mother. It departed to the afterlife. We calmed her soul. We calmed her soul by defeating her in a Pokemon battle. Who knew? We held such power. Um, I'm going to heal my wife. And probably open up with I don't remember, actually, what they start with. You see here, in the original, red and blue, there would be some several rocket grunts here, but in this game, you know who it is. It's Jesse and James. Oh, I believe my wife just got home. One moment. We're back. Let's see here. Yeah, in this game, they're just called Rocket. Ah, yes, I was right. I thought they started with their Meowth this fight. Um, which is fine, because we have my wife, who is Grass-type, and can actually be effective against Meowth. Um, because we are actually going to see the evolved forms of Jesse and James' Pokemon um, from previous fights. I think this is one of the last times we see them. Um, I think I think we see Jesse and James one more time. Oh. All right, that's not going to do a lot, or at least not that much. Okay, great. Love to see it.
ba da 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 Yeah, so my wife, she will evolve at, uh, she evolves via Evolution Stone, but we're actually not going to evolve her until level 38, I believe. Um, what am I even doing right now? We'll go into Hanky Panky. There's Arbok. Ekans, which is Snake Backwards, um, evolves into Arbok, which is Cobra Backwards, with a K. It's just genius. Just genius. And again, a lot of people complain about modern Pokemon designs and modern Pokemon names, and I'm just like, this thing is Cobra backwards. <laughs> Snake backwards. This one's literally just a Pokeball. Um, also, I feel like I wear a lot of the same things when I'm streaming. This is my Ohio State shirt. Bruce Buckeye. That's where I went to school. We won the national championship my senior year. It's not a big deal. But uh, I feel like I'm always wearing like a flannel or a jacket. I'm just always cold. Um, just always cold. Not much more than that. Um, it is also February in Ohio, so that's going to be pretty cold. This might be the last stand for our friend Biddlebug. So I'm going to see what he can do against Weezing. If it hits first, it might kill the crap out of me. Okay, it did not. Uh, Weezing is known to use self-destruct or explosion. Um, tackle will work. We can tank a tackle. Not by a lot, but... Yeah, so coughing evolves into Weezing. It kind of gets a, that horrible, horrible growth on the side of its head. It looks like a miserable, miserable creature. Um, I'm sorry, Weezing. Biddlebug! Last fight for Biddlebug. Let's go. Mm. And what a last stand it was for our friend Biddlebug. You will regret this. I don't think we're gonna regret this. I'll go ahead and spoil it for you now. We're not gonna regret this. So this whole time we're trying to get up here to this old guy. Mr. Fuji. Huh, you came to save me. Thank you. But I came here out of my own free will. Huh, he was fine the whole time. Yes, he wanted to calm the soul of Cubone's mother. And then we go to his house. How cute. He runs like a house for like abandoned or sick Pokemon. It's adorable. So, our boy Fuji gives us the Poke Flute. Poke Flute's very important. It works on all sleeping Pokemon. So, we can use it in battle, so if we ever fall asleep, we can always wake ourselves up with Poke Flute. So, also, I think I got an awakening in the Pokemon Tower, which I will sell now. Can I buy Hyper Potions yet? No, I cannot. I will buy three of you. Always nice having some revives. Perf. Um, okay. Um, and I'll buy a few more repels. But I'm also going to sell some stuff. Ba -da 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 -da. Yes, X accuracy we're never going to use. Um, Awakening is now obsolete because we got our beloved Poke Flute. And Nugget is, is an item literally made to be sold. Um, those rare candies, we're just going to save throughout the game and probably use them later. Um, do we get a free heal when we go back? We do not. So we got some... Um, uh, computer business to do. Now that we've made it through Pokemon Tower, we no longer need the Sylph Scope, which is nice. Um, I'm also going to get rid of this Elixir, because that just raises the power points on our moves. 
Um, I don't know. It hasn't really come up. I don't know if you've been paying attention, but uh, when you have a move off to the side, there's a number, and it'll say like 15 out of 15, for example. But when you use the move, it'll say 14 out of 15. So you can only use a move a certain amount of times before you need to heal again. And an elixir or an ether will restore those power points. Um, but we don't need an elixir right now. We probably won't need it for the rest of the game. We actually don't need that. Uh, we need to go to Bill's PC so we can deposit Pokemon. And here we will deposit our dear friend, Billbug. And withdraw <laughs> Bony. Yes. Not very dignifying of Cubone's mother to call him Bony, but <laughs> it's my game. I'll play how I want to, Cubone's mother. So yeah, we were uh, we're about a half hour in. Tonight we'll probably do um, some more battles. We'll train up Bony a little bit. Um, we might, just might, uh, get ourselves a new member of the squad today. Um, but we'll fight some of these trainers first. Ah, perfect. Um, Boney is a ground type, has the ground type move Bone Club, which is actually a signature move of Cubone and Marowak, which I love. Um, is good against fire type, which is what we're fighting here with Growlithe. Let's hit Headbutt. Alright. This is perfect. Growlithe and its evolved form are marquee Pokemon in this game as well. Um, heck of a first fight for Boney. Alright, and some of these trainers up here are who I was skipping at first. I probably I will definitely need someone else to use Cut. Um, let me see what Cubone can learn off here on my handy dandy second computer. Uh, yes, Grimer, poison type. Once again, weak to ground, but hopefully we don't miss this time. We don't. Let's see. Don't do it. Great. That could have disabled Bone Club, which would have made me sad. Um. All right. Okay, so our friend. Bony cannot learn cut. So we might. Ooh, muck. This is Grimer's, Grimer's evolved form. Let's see if we can live it. Woo! That's a big boy. Yeah. And if you notice, our Bone Club is doing less damage. So Cubone cannot learn cut. So we're either going to have to get Biddlebug back just specifically to use cut sometimes every now and then, or we'll have to teach it to another another member of the squad which ain't no big deal because once you get past those first couple like cut trees like the first couple barriers that they set um to stifle your progression through the game um the hms you don't need that much throughout the game uh -huh. okay we're gonna go the headbutt because it has better accuracy than bone club Um, our friend Cubone actually has, oh thanks, um, another signature move that we'll see later, <laughs> which is kind of silly, but it's also wonderful. Isn't this whole game kind of silly? Um, all right. So our time in Lav Lavender Town is pretty much done. Now we're just going to kind of continue progressing through the game. Um, there are a ton of trainers here. I'm probably just going to fight this last for now. Um, just because... Oh, wow, she has 
times six, five Pokemon. Um, just because that can take a lot of time. And if we need the experience later, we can always come back and fight some of these trainers. There are a lot of trainers like that, kind of like specifically on this um, eastern part of the map, where you don't necessarily have to fight all of them, um, or even that many of them. Um, I'm going to go with a birdie for this Raditzo. Because it really just depends on what you're using and um, if you really need the levels. Because a lot of times when you're using really good Pokemon, it doesn't make that much of a difference um, which ones... Uh, re levels aren't that important, I should say. Um, but I know I've done a lot of kind of like solo challenges in my day where you need to fight every last trainer that you possibly can and you need to do every single last thing that you can um, to try to win with this one horrible Pokemon that you are limiting your access to. Critical hit is lovely. Ah, perfect. Another poison type. Um, so I know a lot of people watching this are probably Pokemon fans. Um, there is a Pokemon Day coming up on the 27th. I'm recording this on the 21st, I believe. Um, and... On Pokemon Day, they're set to announce something really important. Or, like, really big. Probably what the kind of the big game for this year is going to be. And I don't know what it's going to be. I'm pretty excited about it. Um, I know a lot of people are speculating. I've kind of spoken with some other people on other streams about that it will have to do with Johto Gen 2. Or it will have to do with Unova which is Generation 5. And um, for those of you that don't know, Unova was based on America, or specifically like the New York City area is what that region was based off of in Generation 5. Kind of how I've talked about this game is based on the Kanto region of Japan. Um, those games were based on the New York City area. And I heard someone say today that uh, this is the 25th anniversary of the Pokemon games being available in America. So they might want to do something noteworthy for that. And, you know, what is more American than honoring the one region that's set in America? Um, but we'll see. We'll see what happens. Um, I'll be excited either way. I usually play every new one that comes out. Um, even though I'm always going to be mostly partial to these old ones. I'm going to see if our friend Boney can hit first, which I'm hoping, and it cannot. Okay, good. There we go. Super nerd. Go we'll find a locker, nerd. I say as a 31-year-old grown man playing Pokemon and loving it. <laughs> I'm overjoyed right now, <laughs> which is the funny thing. But yeah, I was just kind of talking about how, you know, earlier in my life I probably wouldn't have been comfortable enough doing this. And that's kind of... Um, you know, some negative self-talk that I've had to erase from my, from myself. And I still always have to erase negative self-talk. I am, you know, not the most self-confident person. Um, okay, so we're going to try something here. This, this is the real gym of Saffron City. 
Sabrina. She trains the psychic type. However, this was the old gym, and you can still go in there. And it's the fighting dojo. And it's funny, because Sabrina trains the psychic type, which is good against fighting. So Sabrina just came in and kicked all her butts and told them that they can't be a gym anymore, which is super sad. Um, but here, there is a group of battles that if you win them all, and you can heal between them, um, you get access to a prized fighting Pokemon um, that might just replace our friend Hanky Panky. However, we are a bit underleveled for this point. Yeah, because he's got like low level 30s. We're kind of like mid-level 20s. Like this might kill Cubone in one shot, honestly. Okay, no, it didn't. Love to see it. Um, I am probably going to swap out, though. Yeah, we can probably ride our big guns a little bit here. But I am grateful for, um, you know, platforms like Twitch and YouTube and things like that where I can do things like this that I really enjoy and find a nice community of people that also enjoy those things and we can experience them together. It's a lovely thing. Community. Everybody needs it. Don't kill me. Don't kill me. That was stupid. Um... I think my wife is just the gal for the job. Oh my gosh, not if you're doing that. Yeah, like I said, we're a bit we're a bit underleveled here. We're kind of uh, kind of getting it handed to us right now. Okay, focus energy, focus energy. I talked about this in an early stream. Focus energy is a mo is a move that's supposed to increase your critical hit ratio. But it is so broken in this generation that it actually decreases your chance um, to get a critical hit. Like, if you notice, last time it used Furious Swipes, it got a critical hit. But after it used Focus Energy, it did not. Um, that is because the move is broken. Oh, Primate. This is actually what Mankey evolves into. We're going to go to Keith Angel. Look at that guy. He's so mad. Um... And that is exactly what happens in the anime, is that Ash finds a Mankey, and it just is so, like, wants to destroy the world mad. And then it evolves into Primeape, and Ash is like, cool, I have a powerful Primeape. But it doesn't want to listen to him at all. And I think in, like, that same episode, or, like, the next episode is when he ends up getting rid of it. Why was an Ash reject in our original team premise. Um, so what I think we're actually going to do, there are four more battles here and able to get the prized Pokemon that we're looking for. However, I think I want to continue on to the next gym for now, um, which we actually have a really bad tight matchup against. I mean, we'll see. Yeah, because our levels aren't quite up to snuff um, to fight those guys at the dojo. And as you can see, this is kind of the part of the game where I've kind of talked about things open up a little bit, um, and you just have a lot of options. Um, ooh, okay. I know what we're going to do for these last couple minutes of our stream. Um, first, I am going to look up something. Because a lot of times when I'm playing through these games, I'll just kind of look up learn sets really quick just to see what um, some of my Pokemon learn. Uh, Okay. Sorry. 
Sorry. For now, we're actually going to go find our friend Biddlebug. And we're going to... Ooh, we're actually... I think our friend Mankey might be able to learn Cut. Either way. We're going to need the HM. HM01, I believe, is Cut. Sorry, guys. This is kind of some, some business here. Oh, he can't learn it. Oh, how disappointing. What a waste of time. Okay, sorry for speed up here. So now we're going to deposit our friend Hanky Panky. And we're going to withdraw Biddlebug for now. Okay. Perfect. So now we have a few things we can do before we fight the next gym. So here at the game corner... We defeated Team Rocket, but if we go south here in the city and cut down that tree, we can head over to the gym, which is over here, right there. Um, we can't get there from here. We'll just keep bonking into the wall. Um, we're going to go back there later, because here we have a few things we can do. Up here, this is a secret area. Not, not so much a secret, but... Um, if we can cut through here, we have access. Oh, also, see, that's the thing. We're going to wake up a Snorlax with our Poke Flute. That'll probably be the last thing we do on our stream today. Um, here, Biddlebug, fun fact about Generation 1, if you use cut on the grass, it cuts away the grass. How cool is that? I didn't know that for so long as a kid. I always really liked that. I think when you go back, like if I come back, yeah, it just resets. Um, but that's so cool. So this is kind of like... Yeah, he's like, how'd you get in? Good effort. It's like a secret little spot. Because down here is Cycling Road. And as you can see, there's all those cyclers there. And you can't get on Cycling Road until, one, you have a bicycle, which we have. And two, you wake up the Snorlax that's blocking your way there. But if we go into this little house, this lady gives us a very important HM. HMO2. Um, HMO2 is fly. It will take you back to any town. So that's not entirely true. Well, I guess it is. Um, you can use fly to fly to any town that you have previously been to, um, which is extremely, extremely helpful when you're trying to backtrack and go between places. Um, and it is a flying type move which is super effective against certain types, like specifically grass, which is the gym we're about to fight. Um, so like here, if you look, I think I have, am able to use it, yes. It pulls up our map, and we can fly to any of these cities. That's where the Pokemon Tower was, fought Misty, Brock. We can go to any of the cities we've been to. So the only cities we haven't been to are those two at the bottom of the map. Looks like one's in the ocean, and the other one is south on Cycling Road there. Um, so once we wake up Snorlax, we'll be able to head down there. Um, but probably what we will do is to end this stream tonight, we'll, uh, wake up and capture Snorlax. Because I always love to capture the Snorlax, even if I don't plan on using it. Um, it's just something I have when they have, like, these fun static encounters like this. Um, first thing, we'll save. And then get Keith Angel in front. And then here is where we use our Poke Flute. How lovely. Um, sounds lovely to me, but uh, Snorlax attacks in a grumpy rage when it hears that delightful little tune. Um, and you can run from this Snorlax. You can knock out this Snorlax. But there literally are the one we've seen before out by Vermilion City and this one. Those are the only two in the game. So if you don't catch them, you are just out of luck if you want to catch Snorlax. Um, 
and which is super cool because it's a very powerful Pokemon Snorlax. And like I said, we're not going to use it, um, but it is a really cool Pokemon. That seemed like it did more damage. Um, here, since Dragon Rage does a set amount of HP, I'm not like in danger of accidentally killing it, but here is something that Snorlax loves to do. It loves to use Rest. And Rest is a move that has the negative effect of putting you to sleep, but the very positive effect of <laughs> healing all of your um, hit points back to full. Um, and okay, we're gonna try this again. Okay, good. Well, good and bad, because when Pokemon raise their stats like that, and he raised his special with the move Amnesia, sometimes it can get harder to catch them. First ball! First ball! Amazing. Bloom. Um, let's see. <laughs> Never gets an unset stomach. Un upset stomach. Even if that food's a little moldy. Um, we are going to give a nickname to Snorlax. And that nickname will be... Checking a spelling. <laughs> uh, no! Absolutely. Laxative. Perfect. Enjoy the slope, cycling road. Oh yeah, when you go down cycling road, it's always a downhill slope, so you're always so you're always moving downward, even if you don't want to be. So I think that'll probably just about do it for tonight. Um, really happy to get through Pokemon Tower, see Q, uh, catch Q, Cubone, um, which was really cool. Um, let's see here. Um, we'll try to use Boney a little bit in the gym, but it's going to be pretty hard. Um, just because, again, um, grass types are not a great matchup for our squad. Just because Gyarados won't be able to do much, Jolteon won't be able to do much, and they're our two strongest. And then Cubone is out and out weak. However, our friend Pidgeotto should still be very helpful. Um, I think there's an item over here. A hidden item, if I'm not mistaken. Haha! -ha! Oh, yeah. And that's a cool thing. That is a PowerPoint up. Um, I was just talking about how um, elixirs will um, heal your PowerPoints, as will ethers. And uh, PowerPoint up will actually increase the power points that a move has. So like, for example, if we wanted to increase the power points of Bubble Beam, um, it would go from 20 to like 25 when we use a power point up on it, which is very cool, especially if you're kind of like out in a long dungeon and you don't have anywhere to heal your power points, which is pretty cool. Um, so this is Celadon City Pokemon Gym Leader Erica. The nature-loving princess. Okay, so a whole thing in the anime was that only women were allowed to be at the Celadon gym for whatever reason. But let's all just take a minute to boo this uh, pervy old man. Huh, this gym is great. It's full of women. Boo! Um, actually, in later games, they change his dialogue to say, Oh, this gym is great. It's full of strong trainers. Wow. Even uh, NPCs can grow. Um, so with that, I'm going to call it for tonight. Thank you so much for whoever is watching this later on YouTube. I really appreciate you watching it. I really love sharing it. So I am just happy all around. It's just a happy, happy time. Um, so with that, have a great night, day, morning, whatever. And I will see you next time.